All right, good evening, everyone. And um, Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas. Uh, in another hour or so, at least. Um, we're here this evening uh, to begin our celebration of Christmas, um, the Christmas Eve service. And our Christmas Eve service is actually traditionally in the church the first service of Christmas, the first communion of Christmas. And we continue that celebration in tomorrow morning, of course, when we gather here again on Christmas Day. So Christmas Eve this evening, and before we begin the formal formalities of our service this evening, I'm going to light the candles. Of course, so far this, this Advent, we have been lighting four candles, the candles of hope, peace, joy, and love. And this evening we are going to light the candle of, well, the Christ candle, the candle in the middle. And so I'm going to do that now as we begin. So at Advent, we light four candles. We are reminded that Advent is a time of waiting and expecting the coming of our Lord. For the four Sundays leading up to the birth of Jesus, we light the four candles to remind us of the four spiritual virtues that Christ brings into our world. The candles of hope, peace, joy, and love. And so these are the four, what I've called the four promises that Christ brings into the world uh, at Christmas time. So we light these four candles again, the candle of hope, the candle of peace, the candle of joy, the candle of love. And of course, tonight, as we remember and celebrate the birth of our Lord, we light the candle in the middle, which is called the Christ candle, because of course, Christ comes and brings us these other things. And so tonight, as we rejoice in the birth of our Lord, uh, we want to light this fifth candle the candle of Christ. And so let us pray. Come to us, Lord Jesus. Be born in us this night, in our hearts, in our minds, in our lives. May the light of your life be kindled in us and lead us to the shining truth of God with us, God for us, and God in us. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so we go to our order of service and our acclamation. Glory be to God for the wonder of his love made known to us in the birth of the Savior Jesus Christ. Glory be to God for the gift of his Son who took our flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, and shared our human nature. Glory be to God for the great salvation he has sent to us and to all mankind, bringing joy to the world. For these manifold blessings and for all the wonder of Christmas, glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. We say to Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires know, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
And so let's stand and sing our first hour of Christmas, sing it amid the winter's snow.
confess our sins together. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. God, our Father, you sent your Son full of grace and truth. Forgive our failure to receive him. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, our Savior, you were born in poverty and laid in a manger. Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. Spirit of love, your servant Mary responded joyfully to your call. Forgive the hardness of our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself, that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, and be cleansed from all your sins, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We will have our first meeting. Readings from Isaiah 9, verses 2 to 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest. As warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fueled for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom. Establish and uphold it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so we say together that collect the special prayer for this for this night Christmas Eve. Almighty God, you make us glad with the yearly remembrance of the birth of your Son Jesus Christ. Grant that as we joyfully receive him as our Redeemer, so we may with sure confidence behold him when he shall come to be our judge who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And next carol, O little town of Bethlehem. Let's
Praise to you, O Lord. Please do take a seat. Um, I am not going to preach tonight. I, in fact, I there is, there's a video that I've asked the family to bring up on the screen that I want you to. That's the sermon for tonight. It is Bishop Bishop Gulli's Christmas sermon, and I thought as I listened to it today that it is very appropriate because it was basically some of the same things I was going to say anyway, just longer, so she does it shorter. Um, so let's listen and watch Bishop Woolley, this is our Bishop, Bishop of Chelmsford, as she gives us the message for the next few minutes. May I speak in the name of God, who creates, redeems, and sustains. Amen. I think some of you at least would have been to a school utility or crew service or similar event this year with children or grandchildren perhaps. Maybe there were angels in white sheets and tinsel, or an especially grumpy innkeeper who really wanted to play Joseph. Perhaps a herald destined for a career in the West End. No doubt the scene included some immaculately dressed and perfectly behaved shepherds, complete with clean tea towels on their heads and beautifully white fluffy lambs tucked under their arms. Lovely it all was, I'm sure, but I'm afraid I need to dispel the myth of this idyllic scene. Let's take the shepherds, for example. Luke, I suspect, was only too aware that those shepherds on the hillside best sum up what is in fact the scandal of Christmas. In first century Palestine, shepherds were among the lowest on the social ladder. Dirty, possibly smelly, itinerant workers. In contemporary terms, sort of like a group of Middle Eastern or East European immigrants waiting on a street corner to see if they might be picked up that day for casual agricultural labour or a homeless man living in a tent under a bridge, or a single mum trying to survive on a zero-hours contract of universal credit. This is the truth of the matter, and uncomfortable though it may be, it is to this sort of person that the sign is given about the birth of the Messiah, to those whom we might call them, to the so-called outsider rather than to us. We should never forget this radical reversal of expectation at the heart of the Christmas story. But what is the sign that the angels spoke of that we and those shepherds long ago have been given? Every aspect of the stable scene, every joyful Christmas sound, celebrates and points towards one central truth, that God has become human for us, born as a little gurgling scrap of humanity, a babe wrapped in bands of cloth, but God, very God of very God. That is a huge claim. Many discount it, some misunderstand it, and a few ridicule it. But it is my job and my privilege to proclaim it. God has become human for us. And if that is true, it has implications for how we live our lives and how we order ourselves as a community and a society, even as a nation. For it truly turns the world upside down. And if it is true, and I say if, not because I have any doubt, but because it remains for each of you to decide for yourselves. If it is true, then it will affect each of us. You will need with the shepherds to see the sign and recognize it for what it is. Recognize the child for who he is, none other than God in human form. And the sign is such that the angels can do nothing other than burst into joyful song in response. I've always wondered about angels. If you visit the town of Bethlehem today, You'll still see shepherds, you'll see babies, you may even see a wise person or two. But I wonder, where are the angels in that place which needs them so badly? 
For the message they bring is one of joy, but also of peace. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace to God's people on earth. The whole of the Gospel of Luke is framed by this proclamation of peace. It is here, as Jesus' birth is announced, and again in the final days of his life, as the crowds greeting him on his entry into Jerusalem cry out, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. The angels' voices at his birth merge with the crowds at his death to proclaim one extraordinary song. This is the King, the King who brings peace. And yet, the peace that Jesus offers is so often missing from our homes, our lives, and our world, as we're seeing daily at the moment on the streets of Ukraine, across the cities of Iran, and in so many immigration centres in this country and across much of Europe. We may look to our leaders, the governments of the nations, either to blame them or to expect great things from them. But today, it is our ears, yours and mine, which are the ones who hear this message again. And so it's for us, and not for anyone else, that I say we must work for peace with justice in every corner of this world, especially for those who cannot claim it for themselves. The angel's message must reverberate with gentle sounds of peace and goodwill to all people, those like ourselves and those who are different, those with whom we agree, and those who we think are simply wrong, those who we love, and those who we like less. Unless you think that these are nice but ineffective sentiments, let me say peace and goodwill must permeate your Christmas, whatever it looks like, and whoever you're forced to share it with. It must soak into the time you spend with relatives, who are more welcome when they leave than when they arrive. It must permeate into the family rift that has festered, the unspoken apology, the undeclared hurt. Can we not hear this song gently beckoning us to put it all aside and see the sign, vulnerable and laid for us in the manger? Friends, we're not here in a desperate attempt to hold on to a tradition whose meaning is lost. This is the heart of our belief. I urge you this Christmas to reconsider its power and its significance for you, for your household, and indeed the whole world. If you're able to do that, hidden behind each Christmas tradition, you'll find a sign that even today, Brings life, and a song that even today is worth seeing. A very happy Christmas to you all. The tune is going to be short. But I wanted to just pull out a few things that I wish I could mention. Uh, it is just the power, uh, um, the power of God in human flesh. Uh, you know, she says, if this is true, then it changes everything. It changes everything. If it is the case that God has come to be one of us, born as a baby in a manger. And sisters and brothers, I put it to you that your life cannot be the same as it was before that truth became a reality. It means that God has not abandoned us. It means that God has come to us in the, in the mud of our lives, in the muck of our lives, in the suffering, in the pain, in the 
hurt, in the whatever of our lives. God doesn't just stand from a distance and look at us and say, oh, so sorry to see that. No. God has come down. And so, you know, the point that Bishop, made, Bishop is making is that, that that truth must guide our relationships, our interaction with others, our, the way we live our lives every day. Because you know, God is not watching us from a distance. The, the Christian message, the Christmas message, is that God has come down and He has become one of us. And that's the good news. And, 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 and you know, if, if we are not excited like the shepherds and, and the angels, and, and wise men who travel from distant lands to, to observe this amazing reality. If we are not at that stage, it means we haven't gotten it. We, 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 it hasn't sunk in. Uh, we need to meditate on it for a little longer until it ignites our hearts and fire comes out. Because that reality of God in a manger is, the, is what is going to change our world. That, that is what has changed our world. And that's what's going to continue to change our world. All right. Let's um, sing our next carol in the bleak midwinter. Let's start. <coughs>
by our shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part, yet what I can, I do give him. I give him my heart. And this is the brothers, that's all he asks. He doesn't ask for anything else but our hearts. Let us declare our faith in the Incarnation together. Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature
Look with mercy on this broken world which has not heeded the angelic message of peace. A world where love is sentimentalized, where joy is out of reach, where peace is illusory and hope an unfulfilled dream. Bring to the nations of this world the knowledge of the love which has been from the beginning and which no sin can extinguish or destroy. May they find that love wrapped up in cloths and lying in a manger. Lord, in your mercy, in hear Lord. our prayer. May the love that shone from the blessed manger be ours today. In every heart, every home, every place where some must work, may the grace and truth of God dwell with us and draw us into his presence and empower us to tell others the tidings of great joy which is for all people. Light of God, come into the darkness of our pain and our suffering. Remember especially those we know who are suffering in any way this night. Those who are suffering sickness in mind and body. Those who are distressed, those who are caught up in conflicts in our world. We remember the people of Ukraine and all other conflicts and wars in our world. In the new day that has dawned, may the sick find healing, the sorrowful comfort the despairing hope and the dying assurance of your great love. Bring the wanderers and the homeless to shelter, shield the newly born, and protect those in disaster. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, O oh Lord, grant to the departed the peace that unites heaven and earth. Remember all those who have died recently in our own community, those we know, those we remember, especially at this time of year. Family members, friends, neighbors, members of our own community, all those who have died in the faith of Christ, that they may one day receive the glorious resurrection of our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, right. hear our prayer. So loving God, we thank you for the message of Christmas. We have been reminded of this this evening. We praise you for the glad tidings of your coming to us in Jesus Christ. We rejoice in the fulfillment of your word, the ancient promises of scripture. We celebrate with wise men and shepherds long ago the birth of your son, our Savior. Speak to us afresh through all we have heard and shared, so that we with them may go on our way rejoicing, knowing the reality of your love for ourselves and offering our service to Christ in grateful praise and heartfelt worship for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers.
for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand and let us share the peace with one another. And as usual, if you have an offering, you will put it in the offering plate at the back. Let's share the peace. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of God's peace. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's say the prayer together. That's on our uh, sheet, on our, on our service sheet. Gracious God, for all you have given us, all you will give us, and all you give us here and now. We offer you our thanks and praise. Bless this offering of our money and of ourselves to be used in your service through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please do take a seat. We're going to prepare the table for communion. Uh, I think we can sing maybe in the bleak midwinter again. Yes, I uh, will prepare the table for communion. It's quiet.
by the power of the Holy Spirit, he took our human nature upon him and was born of the Virgin Mary, his mother, that being himself without sin, he might make us clean from all sin. To you be praise and glory forever. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread. He gave you thanks. He broke it and he gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this, all of you, and do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, Send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this cup may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and we lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Our Savior taught us, our Savior Jesus taught us to call God our Father. And so in faith and trust we pray. We join and say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Jesus died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Amen. As usual, do come here to this side of the rail for the bread and the wine. If you are not receiving, do keep your hands by your side. And I will simply offer a blessing to you. This is the first.
communion of Christmas.
And so we, at the table of God's mercy, want to remember all those who are on our hearts this week, those we've been praying for, those we have asked in God to bring healing and strength to body, mind, and spirit. We want to continue to pray for Sue and Dolly and Desmond, Veronica and Chester, Jean and Murphy, Hannah, Pat, and Daphne, Muriel, David, Maxine, and Surya. We also want to pray for our sister Joanna as well. Among others, we remember those who passed as well. Remember Deborah's the labor, Deborah's neighbor's family as they mourn the passing of Sandra. May her soul rest in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, as we prepare with joy to celebrate the gift of the Christ child, embrace the earth with your glory and be for us a living hope in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal God, for whom we wait, you have fed us with the bread of eternal life. Keep us ever watchful that we may be ready to stand before the Son of Man, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together the prayer of thanks. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And so before we have our final carol for tonight, just a few notices to draw your attention to. Uh, this night, it is after midnight, so it is Merry Christmas to you all. We say Merry Christmas all, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas everybody. It's, um, it's good that the Lord brought us here at this time. Christmas Day is a time to celebrate the birth of our Lord, and so we continue that celebration around 10 o'clock. Uh, 10.30 uh, this morning, <laughs> uh, in, a, in another few hours or so. So if you're coming, do get a few rest, a few, you know, some rest, and then come back. If not, have a Merry Christmas, and uh, all being well, the Lord willing, I will see you all in the New Year, um, or just before the New Year, which brings me to our Watch Night service, which will be on the 31st next Saturday night, exactly around the same time as tonight, 11 p.m. next Saturday night. It is, it is a tradition in our churches to end the year with God, to end the year worshipping, and to begin the year with God. You know, it's that the Alpha and the Omega, the first and last, beginning and end, you begin the year with God, you end the year with God. You, you end the year with God, you begin the year with God. And, and um, <clears throat> you know, we, we, we want to do that for all of our lives, including daily. Begin and end each day with God. You begin each day with prayer. You end the day before you go to bed with prayer. You begin the year with, with God. You end it with God. So, 31st of December is our watch night service. It's a time when we're going to celebrate remember, and, and worship. It's a time to worship and to reflect and, and just to testify of God's goodness to us this year, the past year. So that's, that's on Saturday coming. And of course, Sunday morning, we're back here next Sunday morning, that is January 1st to celebrate the beginning of the new year. Um, the other notices are on, on, on your notice sheet. I do want to encourage you, though, to read the Bible in a year. 
I do this every year, and a few have taken on the challenge, but it is a challenge if you dare to take it on. You know, you know that Mission Impossible line. Um, this is the this is the, the, the mission if you so choose to take it on. Uh, there is a there, there, there's a list of the books of the Bible and the days and so on all through the year. Take on the challenge. Read through the Bible in a year. Uh, it only takes about 10-15 minutes a day. Um, and sure, out of 24 hours, you can give 15 minutes to just reading uh, a portion of scripture. It is not an easy challenge. Like many resolutions, they, it, you know, many give up along the journey. But it takes perseverance, yes? So persevere and keep going. I know some people have tried to do it in a year and end up doing it in two years. That's fine. Uh, take it at your pace, but take the challenge um, if you dare read the Bible in a year. Um, as I said, there are some guides at the back, but there are plenty online. There are apps as well. Uh, you know, the, you, you know, you don't have to use my guide. You can use other guides. They're all they're all everywhere. But take the challenge and um, and and make it your New Year's resolution. To, to take on that challenge. I, I have said, you know, um, before many times here that there are people who, young people, especially in my past life uh, as a teacher, would come to me and say things like, you know, uh, how do I know, how, how do I get to know more about Jesus? And I just say, read the Bible, read it. You'll be amazed what you learn when you actually read it. Don't talk to anybody. Just read it. Take up the Gospels. Read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And every time, without fail, every time, they always come back to me like the shepherds. Wow. Amazing. That's amazing to learn so much about Jesus and, uh, and so on. So I, I, I put it to you, sisters and brothers. Even somebody came to me some time ago and said, you know, I can't be with the church. I, you know, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, I can't find a church I like and so on and so forth. I said, well, you know, forget the church. Just read the Bible and find Jesus. And she did that and she was able to find a church that actually does teach the Jesus <laughs> in the Bible that she found. So yeah, do that sometime. All right, so that's, that's my notice for tonight. And hopefully I'll see you in the morning. Welcome, by the way, for all of you who are here tonight. Some new folks and some... Folks that I know, um, but they're, they're welcome anyway. Welcome John and uh, our family, and uh, I think Dave, uh, there's a new person that I've not seen before. Um, have I seen you before? You have been here before. All right, there you go. So it seems me. <laughs> so, that's good. so other than you, Sarah, Tim, and, uh, and David, welcome, welcome, of course. Johannes. Johannes, that's it. Johannes. Okay. Oh, there we go, Johannes. Okay, well. Yeah, we have met. <laughs> good. And my neighbors, it's great to see you guys. God bless you. It's good to welcome, welcome, as usual. Everybody, each year, welcome. And welcome, sir. Welcome. It's good to have you. Thank you. Good. Thanks for coming out tonight at midnight in service. And uh, Surya and the family, Johnson family, it's good to see you guys. And uh, Catherine at the back there, it's good to see you, Catherine. It's been ages, but it's been ages. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Welcome back after a long time. It's good to have you. Yeah, okay. All right, let's stand. We're going to sing our final carol. Yes, final carol. Heart the Arrow of Angels. <clears throat>
Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas.